it's like another person has taken over your entire body to the point where you don't feel the slightest bit in control. It's like this constant battle inside of your head because you have conflicting voices telling you that you shouldn't do this because it's bad and it's gonna make you fat and it's not okay and you won't be loved. And this other voice that you can't help but lose control and want to eat the food. It's like nobody understands what you're going through inside of your head on a day-to-day basis And you feel alone and stuck. What you don't realize is that so many people are struggling with the exact same thing. And you never know what goes on behind somebody else's closed doors. So have a little bit of compassion. Hey friends. Welcome back. I'm glad that you're here. And it's time to start talking about the first episode in this series all about binge eating. And I'm very passionate about this topic because it's something that is very much under the radar when it comes to what we talk about as far as societal norms go. And even with your friends and your family, it's not really a topic of discussion. And I really believe that it should be. We need to start talking about this more because 15 million people are struggling with binge eating disorder. And whether or not you are diagnosed with BED, you still might be in a position where you don't have the best relationship with food or you don't have the best relationship with yourself and you might feel like you're not beautiful or like you're too big or like you're too fat and no, like whatever it might be, it needs to be talked about and we need to figure out ways that we can overcome it because so many people don't know what they can do and what their next step is. So this series is going to address so many different topics relating to binge eating. This video is for you if you've ever eaten emotionally or because you were stressed or to distract yourself from XYZ. If you ever eat regularly past your level of fullness, which I know we're all guilty of that every now and again, you know, once in a blue moon. If you've ever avoided eating foods because they're bad or they're not okay or they'll make you fat. And if you don't have the best relationship with food or you're just curious to know more about binge eating and what it is, how to overcome it and why it's not your fault. So I'm going to be addressing the question of why is the food in control or why the food is in control because that's what it feels like to all of us. We have given the power away to the food. I know for me, ugh, I really hate thinking about it. What am I doing making this video? When I used to know, like, it didn't matter if I was having an all right day or just a really bad day or somewhere in between, I would have days where I knew I was going home to eat shit ton of food later. I knew I was going to because I like had planned it out. I had thought about it. And keep in mind, I have a long history of uh, an eating disorder. I was bulimic for about six years. So it was very much intensified in some ways. And even though my body itself never really showed it, it doesn't have to. And that's another thing I want to talk about is the the, the triggering things people say uh, when they comment on your weight and your body. Um, but that's for another video. I could go off on a tangent. But so I would like plan out when I would go home and like binge. Sometimes it was random. Sometimes it wasn't. But in the times when I would plan it, I would literally start to get mad at myself before it even happened because I was like, I know this is about to happen and I'm so mad at myself for letting it happen even though it hasn't happened yet but I know it's going to and I can't stop and I don't know what to do. Yeah, I know what it's like. I've suffered for a long, long time and I know even if you're not diagnosed that you could be suffering from related symptoms and it is so much more normal than you think and it shouldn't be. We should be able to talk about this and figure it out. Okay, so anyways. (sighs) so we allowed the food to be in control why did we allow the food to be in control and as I'm 
talking throughout this video, I want you to start asking yourself these questions. One of the biggest things that I would say for anybody facing any kind of situation relating to food or not is to keep asking yourself why until you get to the answer. So let's use this for example. Why did I let the food be in control when I should be in control? Why is the food in control? Because I let it be in control. Even if you didn't necessarily want it that way, it ended up happening that way because of repeated behavior that then developed that habit. So you let it happen that way. Why did you let it happen that way? Because one too many times, two too many times, however many times, you went home after work and at night you binged on a whole bunch of food for whatever reason. Or at a dinner party, you overate and you stuffed your yourself past the level of fullness when you did not want to. And then it developed a um, what is now a bad relationship that you have with food. So why did you let yourself? Because you were stressed out or because something happened that was not that great. Whatever it may be, and by the way, oftentimes we can't even pinpoint when this started happening because it's been happening for so long. It's really an opportunity to sit with yourself and think, when did this start happening? When did I start feeling this type of way? When did these patterns start arising? So binge eating episodes usually contain some of the following. Eating more rapidly than normal. Eating until you're uncomfortably full. Eating large amounts of food when you're not hungry. Secretive eating, maybe after everybody goes to sleep. Feeling disgusting depressed and sad after a binge. So at this point we form this habit and the food is in control. So really what's gonna help you the most at this point is first of all, becoming very aware of these patterns and these habits that you've created. What's happening when you're having these, how are you feeling? What has led up to the binge that day? And then you're gonna work your way back and eventually you're gonna have your answers as to what happened that initially caused you to feel like you had to cope with the stress in a certain type of way and you used food to make you feel comforted and to make you feel better in the moment, even if it was instant gratification and in the long run, it's really not gonna make you feel better. That's what we do. We are pleasure seeking people and food is pleasurable. But when abused, it becomes unpleasurable when we reap the effects of it. And then we are feeling guilty and depressed and sad after a binge. So <clears throat> it's become the cycle to where you feel like you're no longer in control. And so what we want to do is get that control back, back into our grasp. So what I'm going to leave you guys with today, because all I really wanted to do was to address it and why it feels like you are no longer in control and the food is controlling your life. Because for me, I would think about food all the time. When's my next meal? When's my next binge? If I was literally planning a binge, food would always be on my mind. I would spend so long looking up recipes on my phone. And it just makes me crazy to think about because it shouldn't be like that. We shouldn't have such a terrible relationship with food and we should learn to love and appreciate ourselves from the inside out. And it's so much easier said than done, I get it. But there are things we can do to fix that. So I am gonna leave you guys with this. Start to become very increasingly aware. My whole coaching regimen is all about mindset and working from the inside out. So when are these binging patterns happening? Start to write them down. Is there a correlation in times that they happen? Maybe if you come home after a long day of work, it happens. Maybe you come home and there's nobody home and you're lonely so you have these patterns. Maybe you're driving home from work and all of a sudden you see a McDonald's sign or a Taco Bell sign and your body's like, hmm, that sounds good, let's eat that right now. Even if you're not hungry, start to pay attention to when it's happening and only then can we start to unravel this problem and fix it. Look for any connections that you can. And yeah, with that being said, I'll catch you guys next week for part two. So, just know that it's not your fault and you are entirely capable of overcoming your binge eating patterns, your emotional eating patterns. You're not alone. You're never, there's always somebody who knows what you're going through. And this is a good opportunity to take those really baby steps to get to where you want to be. Don't jump the gun.
do not jump the gun. You can try, but if you have a repeated history of failing yourself, you're only setting yourself up for failure. So take it one step at a time and that's becoming aware. So if you guys enjoyed this first video, I would love it if you subscribe to this channel. I know I'm a very small YouTuber, but I really know that I have a message that I want to get out into the universe and I have so much to share with you guys and I'm just honestly excited to be talking to this camera but hoping that it's you guys so um, I would love it if you shared the love a little bit and like this video and if anybody you think could benefit from this series I'm going to be posting every single Thursday um, and feel free to join my support group on Facebook it's the gold life support circle and you can also visit my website and learn more about health coaching. Um, I'm a body image and self-esteem health coach and you can check that out on my website. I'll put the link in the description and yeah. Bye. I know I've been rambling and said bye 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm.